Um, all right, Marius asks, what is your opinion of Norway and its current government? We have a system where children have free health care and school. Can welfare for kids be good? No, I mean, I'm, I'm against the whole system in Norway. I, I actually have a talk that you can find on my YouTube channel. Just look under Scandinavian welfare state. I have a talk that I gave in Bergen in Norway on the evils of the Scandinavian welfare state, and I talked a lot about Norway. I, I think Norwegian culture ultimately is in decline. Um, the, the productivity is in decline. Um, you know, life is in, in some sense is too easy in Norway because of the oil. Um, so it can afford to do stupid things and not really pay the consequences. But look, Norway has a mixed economy that, that is maybe more redistributive uh, than Sweden and Denmark because of the oil. I think that would be true. But is, is relatively under less regulations than most. So it, it's capitalist in, in many essential characteristics. But I think the free health care, the schooling, is bad. I think it's low quality. Uh, again, maybe it's better than the U.S., but that's not exactly a good standard. I, I, I think it's, it's immoral to provide free health care or government health care and government schooling. I, I think you need competition in both realms, and you need a real industry. You need innovation. You need entrepreneurs. You need builders and creators and makers. And, um, yeah, all right. Finally, I want to say something about the harm I think that the welfare does to those who receive welfare, particularly to the poorest who receive welfare. So I believe, now I'll elaborate this in a little bit more, but I believe that one of the ways, one of the most important ways in which we attain happiness as human beings is by attaining self-esteem. It's by attaining a certain sense of confidence in our own ability to live, to be productive, to take care of ourselves, to be in this world and know, I mean, I get a lot of satisfaction knowing I'm feeding my family. I'm working and I'm feeding my family. They are not going to go hang hungry because I can take care of myself. That gives me an enormous sense of self-esteem, of self-confidence, and ultimately, I'm happy because of that. Because I know that in this world, I'm competent enough to survive. This is not a hostile world to me. I can, I can do pretty well in it. What happens when you take somebody and you give him a check, and another check, and another check, and you tell him, don't work, don't produce, don't take care of your family. We're taking care of them, so don't worry about it. What you're telling them is that they're useless. What they're telling them is they're incompetent and they shouldn't have self-esteem because they never will have self-esteem because they'll never have that sense that they're taking care of themselves. They are dependent and they know it and it destroys them. Now in the United States this is evident because what we've done in the United States through this welfare system is created a class of poor people who are always poor. Not because they're not evil, not because they can't produce, not because they can't create, not because they can't become rich, but because we've made them dependent. Why should they try when they keep getting a check? And what we've done is not just institutionalize them into poverty, which is horrific enough. What we've done is institutionalize them into unhappiness. We've institutionalized them into low self-esteem. We've institutionalized them into a horrific way of life. And that's what happens when you keep handing a check to people. I mean, this is, parents should know this. You know, I don't know how your parents are. But at some point, you've got to tell your child, go and make it for yourself. And if you don't, then they'll never gain the self-esteem and happiness and success that a human being is possible to a human being. It's capable of it. A human being is capable. So to me, the fact that we deny a class, a whole class of our fellow citizens, our fellow men and women, the ability to work and produce and create for themselves 
is enormously detrimental to them. It's a crime against them. And in my view, the biggest, the biggest uh, victims of the welfare state, the biggest victims of the welfare state, are the ambitious poor who will never live up to their ambition, who will never have the opportunity to exercise their ambition, who will never have the opportunity to make something of their lives because they've been institutionalized into this process of getting checks from Uncle Sam or whatever you call it, Aunt uh, Norway. <laughs> so let me end by talking about an alternative, my alternative. Ooh, I'm out of time. We started late, right? Okay. So my alternative goes to morality, because that's where the action is, that's what's important. People do what they think is right, what they think is noble, what they think is good. And my question is this, it's a simple question. Why should I live for other people? Why should I be selfless? Why is sacrifice a good thing? Why is sacrifice noble? Why are other people's lives more important than mine? Why is it okay to break my legs? Why should I volunteer to have my bread legs broken, which is what happens every day? Why is it my life mine? And in my view, ethics has got everything upside down. Morality should be about, and this was the view of Aristotle way back, morality should be about how do we make an individual's life the best that it can be for him? Or how did he make it that way? What are the principles to guide human beings towards happiness, prosperity, success? How do we make individual lives the best that they can be? What are the principles that allow for that? What we need, in my view, is a new morality, a new ethic. Because this one is corrupt and destroying us. And the more we practice it, the more we'll destroy it. What we need is an ethic of rational self-interest. Of a real, of guiding our lives to maximize our flourishing as human beings. 